Uh, well, I'm going to get things started. Uh, my name is Eric Wright. If you uh, are familiar with me, we talked about virtualization field day four. I've got a little history there. A couple of other alumni here in the room that were actually there, or at least one. Uh, my name is, I'm at Disco Posse on Twitter. That's the easiest way to find me. Uh, and I'm the technology evangelist for Turbonomic. I'm presenting here with more today. If you want to. Sure. Uh, my name is Moore. I've been with Turbonomic for seven years almost. Wow. Started as an engineer. Uh, I'm a product manager today. I'm, an, I'm leading our, our cloud product. Um, but I'll be talking to you today a little bit from a more technical perspective, walk you through the demo, what we do, and then we'll get to talk a little bit about cloud. And we have a little surprise for you at the end. Uh, we'll show you a little sneak peek of what we have uh, coming up early June. So what we're going to do is go through a couple of quick fundamentals. And I know everybody's already itching. You're already saying, get to the demo. I know this audience well. And I know you, everybody's kind of at the Twitter ready. So of course, I'll keep track of the Twitter uh, stream. If anybody has any questions, we'll try and catch them on the fly. Moore's going to do the live demo. But I want to talk about fundamentals first, right? Because if we understand the why, the how is even cooler. And the why is even important. So of course, if you don't already know Turbonomic, we are a real-time, self-managing, hybrid cloud platform that assures application performance. Really, what I like to do, and whether this is a real marketing statement or not, I call it your technology powered by Turbonomic. We talk about hybrid clouds in a sense that maybe is not necessarily, it's, like, it's tough with the marketing word around what is hybrid cloud. So we're going to see exactly what it means. Here's the, here's the operations view of life, right? And this is why we've done what we've done. You know, we, our founder uses this idea, he called it IT management on drugs. This continuous <laughs> support of really bad practices and the assumption that everything is A-OK -okay if we let things fail. And then we find good ways to discover what's gone wrong and then get faster at finding that information in order to then get back to the human portion of remediating where the issues happened. And I know we've all lived this life. Most of the folks in this room and who are watching online, hi, everybody online. Hi, R2D2. Everybody has seen this experience, right? So the way that we think about it is plain, simple question. How can you maintain your desired state in your environment? If we think about what you've got today, you've got applications, you've got your supply of resources, whatever <laughs> it's going to be. It's your traditional on-premises data center. That's right, I said premises. Uh, it is your hybrid cloud environment. I even own it's onpremises.com. That's how much I love that phrase. Uh, we have a hybrid cloud environment, which is on-premises with cloud. The way that we describe it is always different depending on situation to situation. And then, you've got continuously fluctuating workloads, right? At any point in time, the state of your environment is in whatever state, right? How do you actually get it to a desired state? Especially when, like I said, we have this thing we call it the break-fix loop. The idea that even if at this very moment in time, life is good, you're all set, you're in a desired state in your infrastructure. But guess what? Three seconds later, something's changed, right? I'm assuming you've got some relative amount of movement in your environment. So, an alert comes out, something goes wrong, a dashboard comes up, an email, a Slack alert, whatever it is, and you then go, because you're a good person and you want to fix that problem, so you go and you take that information and you either take care of it yourself or you create some scripts. If you're like Larry and you're really, really good, he's going to do some cool scripting because he doesn't want to do it twice. You're halfway home, right? You're thinking automation. But the end result is you've still had to process the information, take action yourself. All well and good from 8 to 6. I'm assuming you want to go home. So at 9.48 PM, when the same thing happens, is that script ready to take that action for you, right? Fundamental problem, continuous human intervention. Like, I'd love to think that I'm important. I am the least important person on Earth for the most part, other than to my family and maybe a couple of friends. But here's the real problem, right? So the challenge that we've chosen to solve is getting out of this break-fix loop by stopping it right here. The fundamental problem we have in the industry is that we think we should get better at it by increasing the speed at which we can take information, feed it to humans, and get humans faster at remediating. We've chosen to solve the problem before it happens. And that's why we assure application performance. Number one goal, no matter what you ask, if someone says, what does Turbonomic do? The first thing you should hear always is we assure application performance. We deliver efficiency. We assure compliance. We do all these things as well, but number one goal. 
We are a real-time, self-managing hybrid cloud platform to assure application performance. So if you think about the traditional thing, like it's whatever the scale is, it's outside of normal, right? We have this idea that we call something normal, but what is normal? It's continuously fluctuating. You try and make predictions about where things are going to go. The only person that's good at predictions is Nostradamus. Everybody since then has kind of faltered on it. So we don't deal in predictions, we deal in real time. So a real time environment where we take CPU, memory, network, storage, the traditional pillars of infrastructure, and that maps against applications, against hardware, against cloud, whatever it is. And we maintain a state of continuous health. So I keep walking in front of the TV, I don't know. Hello camera down there, it's hard to tell what's going on. <laughs> At the same time, we have this thing that we call the triangle. You know the project triangle? It's like time, cost, you know, and quality. Imagine being able to have to choose trade-offs between performance, efficiency, and compliance. But having the engine do it for you. So you can say, look, performance is obviously top notch. In fact, it, it should be like all performance here, and then like efficiency and then compliance. That's what most of you people would think of. But then you talk to the lawyers and they're like, no, compliance needs to be bigger. And then you talk to the CFO, he's like, whoa, we need way more efficiency. So this is the trade-off. And being able to make this with an engine that can do it fully automated is why we have to attack this problem at that layer. So we look at stuff that's to the left. We are in an autonomic platform. In the amount of time that I've been talking to you, which I haven't measured yet, I know you're saying, demo time, demo time, get to the demo, get to the demo. We're getting there. In the amount of time that we've been talking to you, assuming you're a relatively fit individual, you guys look like you're, you're ready for it. You went for a run this morning. So let's assume your heart beats 65 beats a minute. We've been around here for 10 minutes, you know, 650 heartbeats. Have you had to tell your heart, go beat, go beat, go beat? No, it's autonomic. It happens without you thinking about it. That's our approach. So to the left of the scale, these are the things that we manage. Everything from the virtualization stack, obviously a couple of VMware fans out there. We love VMware because they led the charge on really, really hammering home the importance of virtualization. So we latched on to that because we wanted to help them to get better success and get our customers to get better success there. KVM, whether it's with Overt or OpenStack on top of it. Hyper-V, Citrix Zen server. I know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's out there. Like, it's, it's legit. When we get to the IaaS layers, VMware, whether it's vCloud Director, OpenStack, oh, close to my heart, my friends at OpenStack. Anyone here from the OpenStack Summit this week? I saw a couple of faces there. Uh, SDVMM, you know, we used to always joke that, yes, Microsoft is actually delivering. We joked about the blue screen. Remember when Bill Gates had a blue screen? That was seven years ago. They've delivered a lot of licenses since then. You know, public cloud infrastructure, AWS, <coughs> Azure, SoftLayer, and it keeps growing, right? We haven't tackled GCP yet because our customers that are riding this wave with us haven't gotten there either. And in fact, we're kind of all waiting for GCP to figure out what their enterprise strategy is going to look like. Containers, <coughs> cloud OS. So this is a neat one. We call it cloud OS, but it's really like container orchestration is how most of us would look at it. But because the container is cool and someone say like, why does it matter more than Docker? I'm like, that's like saying, why does it matter more than a VM? Remember the container is a construct in which we work. It's a layer of boundary of virtual resources. What really matters is the schedulers that drive those decisions. We can actually drop in and replace the default schedulers and make these same environments work in the same way that we can with traditional virtualization infrastructure. Then higher up the stack in the PaaS layers, which is you know, Red Hat OpenShift. Yay, Red Hat. Red Hat Summit was here two weeks ago. And Cloud Foundry for the Pivotal fans. Being able to do the same thing where we can get complete visibility and be able to assure performance in there by actionable decisions. So not just saying, here's a cool thing, found a problem, you should do something about it, let me know how it goes. Really legitimately going in and taking live actions. And then, even better, feeding those actions through an external API. APIs on both sides, right? Fully RESTful API on either side of this equation. We can deal here through SDKs and APIs, and on the other side with multi-language SDKs and APIs that are completely friendly. Well, they're getting friendlier by the day. More will tell you a little bit more about that. So we can go into your CMDB, your regular orchestration kit, whatever it's going to be. If you've got a provisioning solution, you can query us to get the decisions around placement and around sizing. <coughs> monitoring, this is a fun one. You know, a lot of people say, well, aren't you guys monitoring? Well, monitoring is a side effect of what we do. In order to do things around gathering instrumentation in order to perform control and, and assure performance, we had to monitor to do that. So we kind of became good at it, but that's actually just the start of where the real story is. So 
three core questions, right? And I hate to break it down, but uh, my life is so simple that it's broken down into three simple questions that I can be replaced by a relatively young chimpanzee that's <coughs> easily trainable. What do you do around placing your workloads, around sizing the resources, and about when do you move them in order to satisfy when there's a constraint or an issue with performance? And the reason why we've abstracted logos out of here, because it's any cloud, any infrastructure, any workload. We can't be limited to one thing because we realize that that's a, such a narrow focus. And even better, making sure you can automate all of those decisions and all of those actions. With different levels of comfort, of course, people are going to take, you know, a bit more evolved people will tend to say, I'm down with automation, roll with it. And then more conservative folks are going to be like, okay, some stuff I'm going to automate. And I'm going to take some decisions and maybe put it into my service now. I'll say, yay, OK, and then let it take it from there, right? So taking this idea where we match the demand of the applications in real time to the supply of resources, whether it's on-prem in your hardware or virtualization layers, out to the cloud, or even in pure public cloud environments, which is really, really cool. And you're going to see some of that today and be able to make sure that we can be a completely self-managing environment. We've done lots of different stuff, which we can dive into, like customer use case and stuff. That's, there's no Gartner here. There's no customer use cases. We want to see legit tech. And that's where we get to the good stuff. And the last thing I want to show you is it's actually kind of a great lead into where we're going with stuff. For those that are familiar with Turbonomic or even VM Turbo, remember those folks? So this is our new UI. If you haven't already taken a look at it, it's actually packaged right along with our traditional UI that's out there today. There's a variety of reasons why we're making the shift over to the new UI. Uh, because of course, HTML5 versus having to have a Flash component is kind of a bonus. But also, being able to show our value in different ways and be able to interact with it in different ways. So our supply chain concept maps over here. Well, the idea of matching demand applications, virtual machines, containers up in this layer, down to networks, switches, IO modules, you name it, throughout the rest of the infrastructure, we create this virtual supply chain. And when we do that, that allows us to be able to, in real time, match the demand, take actions in order to size and place workloads to assure application performance. All at the same time, we can tackle some efficiency problems and maintain compliance while you're at it. It's kind of a pretty good tri you know, triumvirate of things that we want to solve. <clears throat>